Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's education videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at text and specifically we're going to be looking at how text and the displacement filter interact with each other. Now these two things don't always mix, right? So you can use the displacement filter, which we'll see in just a second, takes a texture and applies it to something else. Uh, we'll take that and apply it to the text. And of course you can do text without applying this displacement filter, but we're gonna bring them together today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So this particular file here I've got, and it's uh, an image that I have uh, gotten from pexels.com. And uh, we are going to put two text layers on, one on the water and then one on the sand. Um, and let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab the type tool. You can click and hold down here and you'll see that the type tools, uh, there are two actual variations, the vertical type tool and the type tool, or the horizontal type tool, we might say. You can also see here in, in Photo P, and this is also true for Photoshop, will often give you a letter next to a tool and that tells us that if we hit the T key on the keyboard while we're on Photo P, it'll actually jump to this tool. All right, and, and oftentimes I will use the shortcut key to jump back to the move tool. You can see the move tool is the V key. So if I'm selected, uh, if I have the move tool selected over here, what I can do is just hit T and you can see it highlights this T down here and the type tool is now selected. What we are going to do uh, is add a text layer now. So let's go ahead and look up here first and choose a font. And, you know, let's go ahead and delete that there and select all. So there are maybe thousands, if not hundreds and hundreds of, of different fonts. And really, um, one of the cool things about having a web-based um, photo editor like PhotoP is that you, you have access to all of these fonts right here without having to load them, without having to go and search them on a website or something like that. So you can find uh, uh, the font that you want. You can see the preview over here. It's typed out the word preview and you can see the font itself. What I want you to do to start with is just join me here uh, using the same font. It's gonna make everything a lot easier. What we're gonna choose is Serena. That's the font that we're gonna use for the water. It's a script font that is bold. And that's why I wanna use it because uh, bolder, uh, thicker um, fonts will often reveal and show the texture a little bit better. So let's go ahead and select that Serena font. Here, regular is fine. We're actually gonna use the character palette over here in just a minute to increase um, the uh, width of the font, but let's go ahead and jump uh, up to, let's start here somewhere in the 300s, okay? You'll see you're able to adjust this after the fact. And if you saw what I did there, you may have missed it. If you click this little down carrot here, it actually maxes out at 150 uh, for your size and uh, goes down to 150. Watch what happens when we type with 150 here. So we click the T, click in the water here, and I'm just gonna type water, okay? This is fine, it's a decent size, it's not the biggest, but what you can do is click and drag the word size here, and this is a function in Photo P, it comes from Photoshop. If you click and drag to the right, it will, and you can see I'm, I haven't let go, I'm just dragging, 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 until somewhere around maybe 500 or so um, is gonna give us the size that we want. Now we can also use the free transform tool or the scale transform tool, and I'll show you how to do that as well. I'm gonna grab the move tool though first. I'm just gonna center this. And actually that 500 is pretty darn good. You can adjust this after the fact. You can see over here that the text layer is named water because that's the word that I've just typed in. Um, and we want to, uh, what did I want to do there? Oh, let's go ahead and transform. And if you click right here, the move tool selected, the transform controls, it'll show us those transform controls and we can do things like rotate it. So if you click and drag just outside the box, it'll allow you to rotate it. So it kind of matches that wave right there. And let's go ahead and, and center it. Mostly you can see it kind of snapping around a little bit. It kind of locks into place when it's centered. Um, that's actually pretty useful. Um, something like that I think is gonna be really pretty good for where we want. Always confirm using the check mark up here. And let's go ahead, let's go and look at the character palette over here. So this is the character palette. If you don't see it over here, if you don't see this TT, you can always go to the window and then you'll see it right here and you can select it that way. 
Uh, let's make our size uh, a little bit lower. And, and you can always go back to this move tool, uncheck the transform controls of those transform controls will go away. Let's go ahead and just reduce this ever so slightly, somewhere around 480, 490, something like that. Each of these adjustments here in the character palette do something different. Let's go ahead and just go through them all really quickly. So if you wanted to make an adjustment down the road to your font or um, your text later on in, in this project or another project, you can. Tracking, if we, again, click and drag the word, watch what happens. What this does is it separates each of the um, letters or it compresses each of the letters. Um, so in this case, what we actually wanted to do is just set it to zero, I think. And oops, not, not O, zero. And that should be just fine for us. But if you wanted to adjust that, you could. Right here, you can see these arrows up and down and then these arrows left and right. Let's go ahead and drag that. Uh, oops, drag it again to the left or to the right, not to the um, top or bottom. <laughs> My instinct is to follow the arrows, but that didn't work. Um, and that will um, make the font taller or shorter. Okay, again, I think the default for this font is fine, setting it to 100 and letting it be. Now again, this will stretch the whole font out. Now tracking will actually change the spacing between each letter. Um, this here, this arrow will stretch the font out. Again, I'm going to reset it. 100 is fine. And if we wanted to create a bold, now up here, this is where you might see the bold option depending on the font that you're using. In this case though, you can actually uh, kind of add, uh, add a bold if there isn't a bold option up here. Um, and if we looked really closely, look at the tip of this W right here, and I'll zoom in a little bit. The shortcut key for zooming, by the way, is Command plus on a Mac or control plus on a Chromebook or PC. So uh, I'm gonna uncheck this and look what happens. All it does is actually takes that exact font and it makes a separate kind of, uh, it, well, it doesn't make a second layer or anything, but it, it takes it and repeats it and shifts it. Um, so on a thinner font, you'll actually see double if you click this option right here. But in this case, it's functionally making this a slightly bolder font for us. And so there's more space for that texture to come through from the water beneath. Let's go ahead and leave it there. And I'm gonna click my character palette to make that go away. Now, to make my image full screen, shortcut key, command or control, zero, all right? Command or control one will show me an image at 100%. So either way for this, we can see the edges that are important. We're not too worried about the top and bottom right now. The next step is to apply the displacement filter. So we've gone through how to create text, how to change and edit, how to change the font and the size, and uh, some of the ways that you can modify your text. As I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this and it, it does look a little strange. So actually, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna uncheck that. This particular font is bold enough. We don't need to make it any wider. So let's just leave it as it is. And what we wanna do here is two finger click on a Chromebook or right click and then convert the text to smart object. And we wanna do the same thing for the background. So we're actually gonna convert both of these to smart objects. And in order to get the displacement filter to work, they need to be smart objects. Um, if you're not sure how a smart object works, uh, that'll be kind of another tutorial. Um, but suffice to say, it should help us to work with some of Photopea's more advanced functions. Let's go ahead and select that layer right there, water, filter, distort, and displace. So this is the displacement mapping tool that I've been mentioning, and it will allow us to actually match the texture of the water to the text that we've input. Now the default is this 10, 10 pixels. Um, you also need to select the source and you can see here, smart object. So you have your choices. We don't wanna source the water, we wanna source the background. Essentially we wanna apply the texture of the background to the text. And you can see 10, 10, you can see that water texture is starting to show up there. Let's go ahead and increase it to, uh, let's see what 35-ish. And again, like if it's 36, 33, sort of close enough. Uh, you can see this text is really starting to break apart. Um, let's look at what maybe 65, 65-ish looks like. And you can see that that text starts to become unrecognizable here. So for this particular text, for this particular picture, for this particular resizing of this image, I think the best number is, visually speaking, somewhere in this 30 range, okay? 30-30, um, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, 25-25. 
Maybe bring that up just a little bit. Let's try that. So somewhere around the 30, 35 range. Um, and you, you, you may wish to do slightly less or slightly more, but I wouldn't do significantly less or significantly more, at least on your first try. Um, this is going to be, for each project that you do this with, a visual thing. You're just going to have to look and change those horizontal vertical sliders until you have the results that you're looking for. Um, you'll see. We may choose different numbers for our next bit of text. We'll see. So let's go ahead and click OK here. And you can see that the Smart Filter Displace has been applied to our Water Smart Object layer. Now, looks pretty good, but we are not done. For this water layer, what we are going to do first and foremost is change the color of the text. So because we made this a smart object, we have to open it up in order to change the color. Let's go ahead and do that. Just double click the layer and it'll open this layer up in its own tab over here. You can see water.psd. Now, what was the shortcut key for the text tool? T. So let's go ahead and click the T key. That'll select the text. With this text layer selected, we can go up here, this little black box, click on it, and choose any color we want. Now you could plug in some numbers, RGB. But what I like to do is just kind of visually, what I want to do is get a blue, maybe a darker blue, maybe a little bit of that turquoise green in there. That's probably a little bit too bright. Somewhere in here, maybe just a little bit of that turquoise. And then you bring your uh, little color chooser somewhere up here. I think I want max saturation for this particular application, and I'm going to click OK. In order to apply an edit to a smart layer, you always have to save that layer. So here, water.psd, the shortcut key, much easier than going and finding it up here in the, the menu. Um, but uh, save smart object is here on a Mac, Command S. You could also hit Control S on a Chromebook. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to close it. You can see it tells me that that smart object has been updated by clicking the X right there. Now that color, I think, matches the water a little bit better, so it starts to blend in a little bit. But we can do even better. We're going to change the blending mode, and we're going to change the fill. Now we, thus far, mostly in my class anyway, have been talking about opacity, but we haven't changed the fill very much. Let's go ahead and change our layer blending mode to linear burn. And you can see that does uh, allow for that color and texture to have a different interaction than it did before. And let's go ahead and bring our fill down until it looks even more blended. And I think that looks pretty good there. And again, I'm visually looking at this. You don't have to match my exact fill percentage. Um, you don't have to um, choose my exact color. Um, but you know, something like this is, is where we want. Now again, Command or Control, zero. We'll zoom out to fit the image to the maximum size allowed on your screen. In this case, I think that water texture looks pretty good. I think we're ready for the next part. So let's go ahead and add the text to the bottom part. Now I think it uh, probably makes sense to split this up into two videos. So this will be part one, and then I'll pick up right where I leave off for part two.